Well, hi, my name is Miss Jessica here with Bebo Kids Art Academy, and today we are going to be creating a craft. Now, I like to call this the Because I Love You craft. This is great for any holiday for people that you might love. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Siblings Day, or maybe even Christmas or Easter. So I want you guys to go ahead and follow along with me as we get started. Now this is inspired by a very famous artist named Mary Cassatt. If you would like to learn more about her, go ahead and follow those links below and we'll bring you guys to a little more information about her and us. Alright, but we need to get started with our supplies. Today we are going to need quite a bit, but if all you have is a piece of paper and a pencil, you're still able to do this project. So. What I would like you guys to do first is take a look at my table. This is our project that we are going to be creating today. I used a lot of different kinds of paper. So right over here I have plain white for my background. But you guys can also just use regular paper. Maybe you have a special color that you want to use. More than welcome to do so. Also, I have two different kinds of colors for my flower. I like to do a layered. You're more than welcome to just, just choose one color. And over here I have green. So green's gonna be very important for the stem and the leaves. All right, now besides just paper, we're also gonna need glue and scissors to stick all this together. Uh, pencil, Sharpie, and eraser. Again, a pencil's just perfect enough. If you guys have any fun pens, you can bring those out. Uh, gel pens or just fun colored markers. I'm gonna do a little chalk pastel shading. Now this is an optional step, so if you don't have chalk pastels, you don't need to do that part. And maybe some sort of sticker gems. Again, all these extra things are optional. So mostly we're gonna focus on the flower today and uh, the background paper. All right, we need to get started on that flower. It is quite a long process because it involves cutting. Now, maybe you don't have any scissors today. That is no problem. You guys can actually do this project with me just with paper and a pencil and some markers. So whenever I draw my flower today, you can draw that on a piece of paper, add the stem and the leaves, and then you guys can still follow along with all the awesome things that I'll show you. Okay, I'm gonna clear off my desk here, but I want you guys to get your paper for your flowers. Don't worry about the background paper yet, because we're gonna use a lot of different things today. So again, if maybe you only have a pencil and a paper, you're just gonna draw totally fine as well. All right, I'm gonna leave some of this right over here so that way I can get to it when needed. But we're gonna focus on our flower. I like this part a lot because it looks really pretty when we're all done. Now you guys know how to make a flower. Again, I'm gonna do this on two different papers, but you're welcome to just do this with one color. Now I don't want my flower to be too big, so I do wanna kind of measure to make sure it'll fit and not take up too much space. So I am gonna grab this white paper out and I'm going to start with yellow, it's my favorite color. And I'm just going to lay the yellow right on the top. And I just want to see how big my paper is. Now if your yellow is gigantic or maybe you're using green or purple or blue, it's okay. We just want to make sure that we draw our flower big enough to see it, uh, but not too big so it takes up so much space. So I'm going to do about half of my yellow paper. Go ahead and decide whichever uh, size you need to do. You can even cut it in half. Uh, but go ahead, we'll decide that now. All right, on our yellow paper, I'm gonna put this sign that says final draw, and that's just gonna let you know that this is our drawing portion right now. You guys are going to use a pencil, but I'm gonna use my Sharpie so you can see, and it'll be a little easier to cut. So if you would like to use a Sharpie, you can, uh, but also pencils will work great. All right, so I'm gonna start with the center of my flower. Now I need to put this somewhere in the middle, so that way my petals don't get too squished at the top. So I'm just gonna draw a nice big circle. If you notice your circle's too small, it's okay. We're gonna cut this out, so you can even draw it again, flip your paper over, whatever you guys need to do. Now we're gonna add five flower petals. This is an important number because if I draw 20 petals, I'm gonna have to write 20 different things today. So in our project, we're gonna draw all the petals and each one's gonna say something that we love about that person. So again, if you wanna draw, write 20 things, you can make 20 petals, but I just wanna make five. I'm gonna start at the top. Now I'm not gonna make my petal go straight up. I'm actually gonna go to the side just a little bit and I'm gonna just draw a big petal one. You can really draw them any way you want, but I want them to be all the same. Two. We'll go to the side. Three. Four. 
and five. So again, go ahead and just draw five petals nice and big. And once you guys are ready, we are going to cut this out right away. So grab your scissors. Again, if you're not cutting, this is just uh, done with the drawing. Great job. Uh, but we want to cut the outside of the flower. I don't want to cut on the inside lines because then my flower will fall apart. So I'm just going to take my time. Cut right along the pencil or Sharpie line, whichever you used. Now, if you're making two layers of petals, we're going to do that next. But I want to cut this first so I can use it to help me draw. Maybe you're just going to do this one time, totally fine as well. Maybe you want to use the same color, two layers of yellow or pink or orange. But I like using two different colors. All this extra piece of paper, don't throw it away either. We actually want to save that for a little extra part I'll show you. Um, that is a little advanced, so if maybe you're just going to stick with the regular flowers today, then you can throw those away. All right, I'm just about done. I want you guys to take your time. This is a recording, so if there's any point where you need more time, please go ahead and pause and continue when you're done. All right, I'm just about done. Now, while you guys are finishing up your cutting, I want to tell you a little bit about the artist Mary Cassaw. Now, of course, if you'd like to learn more about her, please uh, follow us on our blog. Uh, we will be able to share much more about our company and about our history. But Mary Cassatt is a really awesome American artist. I want to show you a little bit uh, of her paintings before you guys move on. So keep cutting and take a look. These are Mary Cassatt's paintings. She made really beautiful paintings of mothers and children. She's called an Impressionist. You can see that in the way she paints. Notice the water has a lot of lines everywhere. Um, during this time, people didn't paint like this. They painted very realistically, very smooth lines. But Mary Cassatt didn't. Again, that's called an Impressionist. She was very famous for the pictures of children. So you just like, you can see these two little girls here. And one of my favorites is this one. It's called Field of Flowers. It has mother uh, or just women in the background with a little girl picking some flowers and it looks really beautiful. So this is the picture I was inspired by today uh, for our project of our flower. All right, so if you finished Great job. We're going to go ahead and we're actually going to draw this one more time, but instead of drawing, we're just going to trace it. So I'm going to take my flower, lay it on my next color. Again, you do not have to do two colors, but you are welcome to. And I'm just going to take a pencil or a Sharpie and I'm just going to trace right around the flower. This will help to make sure that my petals look the same and that I don't draw it too small. This second color is going to go behind my flower. And if it's too small, I can't see it. <laughs> All right. Now it's okay about the center of the flower. You don't really need that. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut this out. So again, a little more cutting. Take your time though. However, you made those petals. If you notice your flower is really small, sometimes we do that. We draw a little bit smaller than we meant to. Uh, just grab another piece of paper and draw that one more time. Don't be afraid. Artists make mistakes all the time. They like to turn those into really fun things. So if you do accidentally draw it too small, that is okay. Easy fix. All right, now we'll do one more set of cutting here once we get our flowers going a little bit more. Um, but we're gonna do some really cool things on the middle of our flowers. So I might have done this before and maybe another craft project. Now you don't have to worry about the extras of your second color. I'm just gonna toss and throw those away or maybe you wanna reuse them for part of the decorations. You can definitely do that too. All right, so I have two different flowers. I kept this long rectangle for my yellow. So if you do have some long rectangle of either the second or first color or maybe just grabbed another piece of paper, you wanna save that. We're gonna need that a little bit later. So I'm gonna set it up here and now I'm gonna figure out what to do with these two flowers. So I'm gonna move this sign so it doesn't get too lost. Now I'm gonna focus on my first flower, my yellow one, and I have a nice circle so I can use that for later. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend all of my petals. This is just gonna help uh, curl them a little later. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just gonna bend each petal towards the middle and then unbend it. I'm actually gonna do that to both of the flowers. So once you guys finish one flower, 
go ahead and move on to the next one. This is going to help the petals kind of pop up a little bit more. Again, this one doesn't have a circle, so you can just bend it wherever you want. All the way across. Now it's going to be really easy to write all of the fun things we love about the person now. So we're going to go ahead, once you guys are done folding, uh, we're going to grab a pencil or maybe our fun markers or Sharpie, and we're going to write down the things on our first flower that we love about the person we're making this for. Again, maybe it's for mom or dad, maybe it's for grandma and grandpa or just friends, or maybe you're just making it for yourself and all the things that you like about you. Those are awesome things to talk about. So let's grab a fun colored marker. Oh, I think I'm going to use some blue today Ooh, or maybe gold. I do love gold. And I'm going to write five things that I love about the person I'm making it for. I'll make it for my mom today. She's a really, really awesome teacher and that's what I love about her. Um, so I will write and then we're going to say I love you because and so I'll write you teach others. So I want you to go ahead and take the time to write all the things. Now it's going to be a sentence that says, I love you because, and then you're going to finish that sentence with five different things. Now, if you don't know how to write, what if you haven't quite learned yet that it's okay? What you're going to do is draw pictures or maybe decorate your flower with all your fun colors. And you can draw things that you love about that person. Maybe they love to cook for you and you have your favorite food like cookies or meatballs. And you want to draw a picture of that. So I want you to go ahead and just decide all the five things that you love about that person. So I love you because you give me hugs. I love a nice hug from my mom. I always like to end it with an exclamation point as well. You care for me. That's a great one. Care for me. I love when my mom bakes cookies. <laughs> so I'm going to say you bake me cookies. <laughs> Try to keep them short so they can all fit. And my last one will be, because you love me. All right, again, if you need more time, maybe you're trying to think of all the things that you love about the person, there's just too many. Uh, maybe you're drawing pictures of decorating your flower. I want you guys to go ahead and pause. Go ahead and finish up just the petals of that flower. Don't worry about anything else just yet. Um, just on the first one if you did make two, and then come on back, we'll finish up with our flowers. All right, so hopefully you guys finish those up. What we're going to do now is we're going to add some shading. Oh, we need some stems first. So if you got a green, if not, grab a piece of white paper. We can always color that green. I already have a leaf drawn here, but what I want to do now is cut a stem. So we're going to, you know, draw a straight line. We want a nice long stem. I actually already have two cut out. So I'm just going to lay those down so you guys can see. It can be really any shape and size. We do want to make sure it's long enough. So if it isn't, you can always cut two and we can glue those together. But go ahead and cut a long rectangle for our stem. And then we're going to need to draw two leaves. Now our leaves, we want it to be big. They can be any shape or size. You can see here I have a kind of a spiky looking leaf. But maybe instead you just want to draw two really big football shaped leaves. So go ahead, you can cut your leaves. I'm only going to do two today. I don't really have enough space uh, for more than that. So we're going to keep just two leaves, make them really big. I want to be able to see those on our paper and cut those out. All right, take your time to finish that up. But right now we should have two, one or two flowers, a stem and two leaves. This piece of paper, keep it out. We still need it, but not quite yet. We're going to add shading to each of these. Now, this is a little bit different step that involves chalk pastels. These are the dusty materials. You can also use a marker, maybe even oil pastel or color pencil. It would probably work great. Um, if you don't have any of those, it is okay. You don't have to do this step. You can just watch or skip right on over to the next part. But I'm going to add a darker color to each thing. So I'm going to start with my greens. I'm going to find a dark green and I'm only going to add the color to one side. I'm going to go with the left side. So I'm going to hold it like a pencil and I'm just going to lay it down and I'm going to draw one line 
on the left side of my stem and I'm going to draw one curved line on the left side of my leaf and the same thing on my second one. Just one. Then I can just take one finger and I'm just going to kind of push that chalk and it's going to make it look a little more shaded like a real leaf, a real stem. Do that for my leaves. Just one finger, just kind of pushing. You're going to get a green finger. <laughs> now, if you're doing markers or colored pencils or oil pastels, you don't need to blend them. You're just going to add the line. I also have some towels over here, so if you do need to wash your hands, please do. We're about to use two more colors or maybe just one. All right, I'm going to set my leaves and stem to the side, and now I'm going to do that with my flower. Now, it depends on what color your flower is. Since I did yellow, I can either choose orange or gold to shade with. If you did orange, maybe you want to use a red to shade with, or if you have a different color, we just want to choose the same color but a darker version of it. So maybe purple or dark blue, anything that's darker than your color. I'm going to try to do some gold. I love that color, so you can tell I wrote with it. And I'm going to just do that to the bottom of each leaf. So just one side. So I'm going to do my two right in the middle. The bottom, of, I should say petal, not leaf. So if you go over your text as well, you won't really see it. And for this, I'm just going to kind of do the bottom half of that one. <laughs> Same thing, I'll take one finger and I'm just going to push the dust around. It's all right if it goes over the letters because we will not see those. I love adding shading, it looks really nice, very realistic. All right, so I did that to all my petals, and I'm gonna do the same thing to orange. So if you have two of the same colors, maybe you only did one, you don't have to do any more than that. But I'm gonna add a little bit of red to the bottom of mine as well. Let's see, where do I want the top to be? Make sure it's the same as my first one. A little bit to the bottoms of each petals. And I'm going to blend. All right, now that's going to be it for the chalk pastels. So if you were just watching that step, we're going to jump right back into finishing our flowers. All right, please go wash your hands if you need to. Chalk pastels can be messy. We don't want to get fingerprints everywhere, so I'm just going to wipe my hands on this towel. But if you need to pause, please do. All right, that's it for chalk pastels. Now what we're going to do is kind of figure out how to make the middle of the flower um, and then put all of our pieces together. So we are going to need some glue, our original paper as well. So I have those just to the side because um, I'm going to focus on this nice flower. Now I'm going to curl all my petals. If you know how to do that, grab a pencil. If not, try it with me or you don't have to. But I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to grab the tip of my flower and I'm going to curl the petal around the pencil. And now it has a very nice, natural, realistic looking curve to each petal. You don't have to do it too much. I'm just going to do that to all of them. You can even go back and kind of straighten it out again so it's not too curvy. I mean, maybe if you don't even like it, you don't have to do it. You can just leave them as they were before. So I'm going to do that to both of my flowers. Now for our leaves and stems, we are not going to curl those because we're going to glue those flex. So you don't have to worry about anything else. Just the little petals here. All right. Take your time with that. But once you get all of them down, then you can lay this on top. And I'm going to kind of do it so you can see all the petals. Now we have a nice, beautiful flower that looks very realistic that we can glue to our paper. Now we are going to glue those two things together. So make sure you're completely done with those flowers. Maybe you want to add a little more to it. You can, but I'm going to grab my glue and I'm actually going to glue the center of my back flower. Now maybe you only have one, so you don't need to glue anything just yet. But if you did draw two, my second flower, I'm going to put a bunch of glue in the middle. I like glue sticks, but you can use any glue you have even some double-sided tape works. And then I'm gonna lay my first flower on top and press. And I'm gonna hold for about 10 seconds. Two, three. Just gonna make sure I get all that really glue down. Just pressing, I'm not hitting it because I don't wanna flatten my flower. I'm just going to press it down with my fingers. 
All right. And then I'm going to let that dry. So I'm just going to leave this glued together off to the side and I'm going to make sure I have those still with me. The table's a little messy. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe. Now we're going to figure out what to do with this. So this is a part that can be a little tricky. Um, so I want to make sure if you feel like this is too hard, you do not have to do it. This is going to be for my older kids that are watching this. Um, but this is going to be for the fluffy part in the middle of the flower, just like you see here. Um, so again, it's going to be a lot of steps. It's going to require a lot of cutting and gluing. So again, if it gets a little tricky, it's, you don't have to do it. But try. This is a great opportunity to learn something new. Now we want it to be long enough to where if I curl it or create a, you know, a ring, it's going to be the whole center of my flower. So if it's too short, um, we got to make it longer. If it's too long, it's okay. You can always cut some off. I'm going to open it back up though. And what I'm going to start with is I'm going to bend just a little bit at the bottom. Let me show you first. So I'm going to take some of my paper and I'm just going to kind of bend it upwards, quite a bit of it. So that way I can glue this part flat and now it's going to stand up. So it should look like an L <laughs> and I'm going to really crease that. And I want these to be kind of tall. So if right now you just folded your whole thing in half, you might want to cut that rectangle a little bit bigger. Again, if you need to rewatch that, please go back and do so. Now to get this to curve, you know, if you try to create a circle right now, this is not going to lay flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut it in about four spots. So I'm going to start right in the middle. And I'm just going to cut a little line there. This is on the small part. Then I'm going to do two more over here. Well, let's do two more, so we're gonna do five and two more over here. And I might be thinking, well, why am I cutting those? And the reason why is when I start to fold it, you can see that wherever I did a cut, it now is curving and I'm gonna be able to glue that now and have a circle. So that's the important part. We're not gonna glue that yet though. Uh, we're gonna need to add the frilly part sticking up. So I'm gonna lay this out. Again, you can see those are my parts I'm gonna glue down. On this side, you can use a pencil first if you want, but I'm just gonna take scissors and I'm just gonna cut, start cutting really thin rectangles. I don't wanna go all the way down though to here because then I'll just cut it off. So we gotta be careful. We don't wanna go all the way down. I'm gonna do that across the entire thing. So take your time, try to keep those kind of thin. We don't want it to be too thick makes it a little harder for it to curve around like a circle. If you do accidentally cut too close, uh, you can always glue it or start again. Again, it's all right to make mistakes. Just gonna try it again. <laughs> okay, I finished mine. Again, if you're not done, please stop and go ahead and finish that and press play when you're ready. All right, so now I have all my things on here. If I start to curl that, there's the center of my flower. And I might be thinking, well, how do I make a curly? Just like those petals. So I'm gonna open it back up one last time. Make sure that I'm curling it outward. So away from these little feet that we're gonna glue down, I like to call them. And I'm just gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna wrap those around just a little bit. And they're gonna get curly. So I'm just gonna do that all the way across. It doesn't have to look perfect even, uh, cause this is a flower. So it might just look a little curly in both directions. Okay, once you get it enough curled, if you like that, then we're going to go ahead and curve that together and we're going to glue right here so these two pieces stick together. I just want to make sure it's big enough to fit in my flower. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead, take my glue, and I'm going to put the glue, not on the bottom yet, but right here on the side. That way I can stick these together. So I'm going to overlap that, hold that for a couple seconds to make sure that's really glued. I got some glue on the inside. It's all right. Okay, so it's still pretty wet there, but I'm going to go ahead and glue it down to my flower so I can make sure everything's going to dry together. Now I want to put my glue right here on the bottom, or if it's a little easier, just go ahead and put a circle right around the flower. So I'm just going to go like this right around the flower. My glue dries clear, so I'm not too worried about getting it everywhere, but if yours doesn't, definitely make sure. I'm gonna set that in the middle and I'm just gonna press down. 
how we really want this to stick. So I'm going to make sure I hold that for 10 seconds. Awesome job, guys. We're still going to decorate the center of that flower. So if you did not do that part with me, it's okay. Um, we can do other stuff later. Maybe you're making a sunflower. Um, that is up to you guys. But great job. I always like doing that part. All right, this needs to dry. So I'm just going to carefully set it over here. Away from me, I'm going to move those over as well. And great job. We just finished the flower. That was probably the hardest part because there was so many cutting and drawing and gluing. So great job. We're now going to assemble the whole thing together. We need this to dry a lot. So we're actually going to just leave that there for a bit. Uh, we're going to start to add some decorations around our paper. So this is my sample, but let's go ahead and grab our background paper. Maybe it's plain white. Maybe it's, you know, someone's favorite color that you're creating this for. It's your favorite color. Uh, but let's go ahead grab that. Now we want to make sure our flower does fit and our words do too. So I'm going to carefully just lay this here for a second and just kind of turn it so it's the direction that I like it. All right, we're going to go right about here. Then um, I want to make sure that my stem, I'll just kind of kind of lay my puzzle together. All right, that's pretty good. I have a lot of space now to write. So I'm going to start with a pencil because I want to make sure I get it in the right spot. We're going to put I love you and because so if you're not sure how to spell it, you follow along with me. I'm actually going to start with the E towards the middle. I know that seems kind of strange. So if I start with I and then I start writing love, it might get a little squished or too far apart. So I'm actually going to go with the end of the word love. And I'm just going to set it right here towards the middle. Okay, now I can go. I'm going to work backwards, but I'm going to spell V, O, and L. Now, if you're thinking, that's kind of complicated, just write the words, I love you. That's a great way to make sure our letters are spaced out enough apart. Then I'm just going to write down here because, and a dot, dot, dot. Now, those three dots are telling me that my sentence is continuing, and it's all the things I wrote on the flower. All right, I'm gonna move this out of the way now because it's time to color and decorate. So you guys can use any colors you want, any of your pens, markers, Sharpie, something that's gonna be really bright and bold so that we can see it. I'm gonna use some of these like gel pens here. Oh, I like this blue color's really nice. Ooh, but I also have a good purple. Mm, tough choice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have fun decorating it. Any font. You can do anything to the paper. I did a border of jewels, sticker gems. Oh, but maybe you don't have those. You can just take your marker and you can add some good decorations on there. Use my nice gel pen. If you know cursive, you can write cursive. Okay. And again, you can add more sticker gems around the outside. Let's see where I put those. Maybe use colors that match what you're doing. I'm gonna do some purple. So what's fun about sticker gems is when you can get them in a long row, you can just add the whole row to your paper. <laughs> again, you guys can do any kind of decoration. Take as much time as you would like on this as well. Know that our flower will cover some, well, pretty much cover the entire middle. So don't really add too much in the center. But I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up with my sticker gems. If you need more time, always just pause and press play when you're ready. I can even add more colors, more sticker gems. All right, now I'm going to not even go all the way up because I'm going to add my flower there as well. I can always put more later, so I'm going to add those there. And I'm going to go ahead and stop. But you guys, again, you can add more later. You can continue. That is up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and now get all my flower ready. So it should be pretty dry by now. Um, to glue this down, though, we want to make sure we flip this over and glue the back of the flower. you got to be careful, too. So I'm going to hold the middle with my fingers. And I'm just going to add a bunch of glue just to the middle. Flip that over, make sure it's in this right direction that I want it to be. And I'm going to press that down. I'm just going to hold that down for about 10 seconds. Great job. 
We're still gonna decorate more, so don't worry. <laughs> All right, then I'm gonna glue my stem. So I'm gonna flip that over, add my glue to the back of the stem. Make sure my shading is going the right direction if you did that. It's gonna touch the bottom of the paper. If it's too long, we'll just cut some of it off and add my two leaves. So I'm gonna flip my leaves over, make sure the shading is on the bottom, press those down, and there we have our leaf and our flowers all glued to our paper. Now it's gonna be a little wet, so don't touch it for just a little while, but you may add more. If something pops up, just glue it back down. So for the center of the flower, I did a bunch of sticker gems going in a circle. I thought it kind of looked like a sunflower, so you can do any colors you want. Maybe you want to just add some brown marker to make it look like a sunflower. So again, I just took some sticker gems and I just laid them in a circle right in the center. You may do something different or different colors. You can do a rainbow pattern, <laughs> whatever you're thinking. This is the part of the project where you guys get to have fun. Whatever details, designs that you think the person would love, you know them best. And you can keep adding more. I'm going to stop right there for today on that, though. But please, I'm encouraging you to add as much as you want. You can do a whole border all the way around. I even have some fun heart sticker gems. You can add those everywhere. Maybe you want to draw more pictures or even write more things that you love about that person. But that, guys, is going to be the end of the project today. So please keep working on that if you are not done. Of course, this could be going on forever. You could do a bunch of different kinds of things, but great job. We created a really cute picture. Make sure that dries fully, though, before you give it to that person. Well, thank you guys for joining me today as we made a craft for somebody that we love. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to give those to those people. My name is Miss Jessica with Feeble Kids Art Academy, and I hope to see you guys again. <laughs> Bye.